Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw a skull uh, in honor of Halloween, and I've decided to do uh, this illustration with white colored pencil on black paper. Uh, but I should caution you that what we have here, this square, has actually been drawn with white chalk. That's because I want it to be fully erasable, uh, which, uh, you know, is possible with chalk, not so much with uh, colored pencil. And uh, just to let people know what the measurements uh, are here, this is about three inches inches on all sides, uh, or in uh, centimeters, just a little bit under eight centimeters, but uh, really you can make it any size you want, as long as it's a perfect square. Now I'm going to go ahead, again with the chalk, and add just intersecting lines right in the middle. Okay, well you can see I went in with a kneaded eraser to even lighten up these lines a little in advance, knowing that I want to erase them all uh, toward the end of the process. But now I am going to switch to a white colored pencil to begin putting down some of the basic guidelines. All right, so this is the line for the uh, top of the skull. And um, you can see that I've really started with touching just above where this line crosses that far left line, uh, and then curving gently and meets right in the middle there uh, to that top line, curving over here pretty much just a, a gentle curving line that comes down to meet right there. That's actually one of the easiest lines uh, in this uh, lesson. Sadly, the rest of them are going to be rather more complex. But let's go ahead and uh, keep working on the basic contour uh, of this skull, which I should say is going to be in a three quarter point of view. So here you have the line that follows along uh, the cheekbone, so uh, just a little gentle uh, indentation that comes down, touches that line again right here, I'd say just a little past the halfway point, you know, a little higher up uh, on that line. Uh, and then um, a slightly complex uh, S shape here that is really uh, delineating the uh, cheekbones. I'll be talking about this more later. That um, you know the cheekbones of the of an actual skull are very prominent, uh, prominent in a way that we don't see uh, on the human face, except maybe uh, in uh, extreme old age. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and keep working on uh, drawing the jawline down here as it uh, curves back up to connect uh, with the rest of the head. All right, so you can see uh, it begins to curve a little bit back, uh, but not near uh, to touching that line. And then a, a fairly uh, gentle curve here as it comes back and then sort of hooks around to the back uh, section of the jawbone. And I've sort of let up on the line here, even sort of erased away a little bit, because I'm going to be trying to do um, a dramatic lighting effect towards the end, and a lot of this is going to get caught in shadow. Well, we're almost done with the contour. Let's go ahead and finish things off uh, over here. All right, so I've sort of left things a little bit vague over here because, again, this is going to get caught mostly uh, in shadow. Uh, but you can see that uh, the back section of the uh, jaw kind of curves up here. It's going to um, connect uh, just below the uh, cheekbone, which I'll be putting in here later on. And then, you know, the rest of this is pretty much just that same sort of gentle curve uh, at the back of the head as it uh, comes along and uh, reconnects back behind uh, the jaw. Well, I think maybe the next thing to do is to draw the uh, eye sockets. All right, so now you can see how I'm starting to do this in a, a three-quarter point of view. Uh, starting with this eye socket, notice how um, that you get a tiny little sliver of space over here. That'll help you sort of get the uh, shape of the rest of this. And uh, quite a diagonal uh, slope here on one side of the eye socket. I should say, actually, that, you know, different skulls are going to have different structures. So I don't want to propose that this is the single way to draw a uh, skull, you know, I looked at uh, different photo reference uh, on the internet and, and arrived at this particular design, but I'm sure different skulls uh, have, you know, widely varying structures in terms of uh, the shapes of different individual parts. One thing to notice here is that because of the three-quarter point of view, you're actually seeing the um, bridge of the nose here that is interrupting, I'll just sort of maybe indicate that a little bit for you, the bridge of the nose is uh, interrupting the shape uh, of the rest of the eye over here, and that's why that has that slightly unusual 
shape to it. Well, speaking of the nose, let's go ahead and uh, draw that shape. Uh, so here the shape of the, um, I guess the nose socket, I would call it, uh, vaguely triangular in shape, but I noticed uh, on different uh, skull reference that I found that there, there are sort of jagged edges up here, and maybe some of you watching who know more about the human skull than I do, skull any skullologists out there <laughs> can uh, uh, explain, but it sort of looked like the, the, the bone is quite brittle in this area, and um, maybe it, it sort of uh, breaks a little uh, over time or decays, but you, you'll often find sort of jagged edge, sort of irregularities in that area, and, and here I'm trying to indicate a little bit of um, the skull going back inside the nose uh, so that you can see a little bit of the interior. Well, it's time to move on to the teeth, which um, you know will surely be one of the trickiest parts just in terms of complexity, but let's begin with some basic lines to, to get them in the right place. So I've tried to put down some just very basic guidelines for um, where the upper and lower teeth are going to go. Um, and uh, certainly from this point of view, uh, and maybe just uh, and as a matter of fact, the uh, upper teeth um, uh, are you know, more visible, uh, larger, take up more space uh, than the lower teeth here. Um, but let's go ahead and maybe start trying to indicate the act actual individual teeth. Oh, I was going to point out that the um, uh, in different skulls that I saw, the uh, sort of wisdom teeth uh, area back here actually extends a little further back uh, than the uh, upper teeth. Well, let's go ahead then and start drawing the individual uh, lines for the teeth. Now I'm going to have to erase away a lot of this uh, later on, but I wanted you to at least uh, see my initial approach of uh, trying to get these uh, front teeth, uh, well, I guess what we would call the buck teeth of uh, those two front teeth up there, um, so that they sort of line up, uh, you can imagine them lining up in the center of the head and then kind of working out from there. And then I also began to define uh, sort of like, well, of course it's not the gums, uh, but it's in the area where the gums would be uh, as these teeth um, attach to the uh, you know, upper and lower jaw. Um, like I said, I am going to be coming in here and uh, trying to erase away a lot of this just because of the dramatic lighting effect that I'm trying to do later on. But for now, I'm just going to leave it uh, as is and we'll, uh, we'll get to that part. Uh, when we get to it. Now it's time to uh, get in some of the uh, more defining characteristics of the um, cheekbone over here. I'm just going to go ahead and do the cheekbone and some of these other lines as the lower jaw uh, connects to the rest of the skull. All right, so these lines over here, I think, are actually pretty important, and we don't tend to focus on them too much, at least I don't. Uh, but um, what you have here is this sort of ridge of bone here uh, that I must assume uh, helps to protect the eye. Uh, it almost looks like a guardrail or something that comes up here, but this line that curves back and uh, reattaches in with the skull, that's going to become a fairly significant shape as I begin to add the shading. And then also back here, there's a, a point where the uh, the light is going to hit uh, in a pretty bold way this, uh, this section of the bone that connects to, uh, again, what we just call the cheekbone. Um, and uh, basically that uh, maybe gets all of those uh, guidelines in place. You may have noticed that I erased, I felt like this was a little too far over to the right, so I uh, tried to erase it away and move it uh, over to the left. Uh, but now it's time to uh, finally knock it off with all this time lapse and uh, start to get into some real-time shading. Hang on, I'm going to sharpen this pencil. It's looking a little dull to me and I will be right back. All right, well, I also took advantage of that moment to erase those initial guidelines. Uh, and uh, now we can get on to adding some shading. Uh, I'm going to try to do a fair amount of this real time. Uh, we'll see how far we can go with that because it is going to be a time-consuming process. But this is, um, you know, sort of an interesting video because it's about the uh, drawing the skull, but it's also a little bit about uh, teaching this white pencil on black paper. Um, 
uh, technique, which uh, I'm no expert on. In fact, you know, <laughs> I did it for that other video. This is basically the second time I've uh, attempted one of these. Um, but it, it creates some very cool effects, and I knew for sure that a white skull against a black background would be a good um, subject matter for this technique to create the feeling of, um, you know, the inky blackness of night and just... Uh, uh, whatever it would be, a spotlight or a moonlight or, or whatever glistening off of this skull. But in order to do it uh, uh, correctly, you need to have a sense of the um, light source. Now, I've uh, decided that the light source is uh, above uh, and uh, to the left, uh, meaning that all of the white is going to end up on this side, most of it. And then over here, you can see me erasing away in anticipation of how... Uh, relatively, comparatively little light is going to get uh, into that area. That's going to be the sort of deep shadow uh, section. But you can see me sort of gradually uh, building things up here. And, uh, you know, maybe to keep things interesting, I'll, I'll just sort of take a break on this, because this is this is going to extend all the way across uh, the top of the skull. Uh, and maybe I can talk instead about some of the more um, interesting details here of where the light really hits. Like, for example, the uh, bridge of the nose here, I think, is going to get uh, quite a lot of white on it um, as the light hits it. And then also this edge of the uh, eye socket on this side in particular, um, I imagine, is going to get hit pretty well with uh, sunlight, moonlight, <laughs> mystical unknown light source. Um, and uh, basically, uh, you you have to s sort of think it through in terms of uh, where logically uh, light would glint off the skull. It certainly doesn't hurt to look at re reference, as I did, and I can sort of give credit to uh, um, that for having some sense of where this light falls. But I think even, uh, even without that, you can begin to um, sort of imagine the proper places for the light to... Uh, be glinting off of this skull. So provided you've sort of practiced in drawing, you know, a lot of times teachers have you draw an apple or a, a sphere, like a ball sitting on a table, and all of that stuff is indeed a pretty good way of beginning to understand the rules of uh, light and shadow. Oh, you know, one thing, let me talk about this, because, you know, doing this video has become an educational process for me, because I've sort of drawn skulls, but most of the time I've been kind of winging it and drawing them from memory. Uh, in preparing for this video, I really had to look very closely at these photographs of skulls and started to notice um, details that I never had noticed before. Like, for example, uh, just above the front teeth, uh, I never realized this, they're uh, on the, the skull just above the front teeth, I guess it would be beneath the gums, um, there are, it looks like, kind of ridges um, that um, almost sort of brace, provide a bracing structure uh, for the teeth. Um, those of you who have drawn skulls before, you're going to probably be saying, yeah, of course, dude, of course, it's the first thing you see, man. Uh, but I actually had never noticed this uh, so much before, that there is this sort of interesting... Uh, surface detail here of, um, I guess we'd call it almost wavy, you know, it's going up and down, uh, providing, to me, it almost looks like a architectural support for the upper teeth. Um, and, uh, yeah, getting a little detail like that in place uh, can help to make your drawing that much more authentic looking. Let's see where else I can... Uh, talk a little bit about adding light and shadow. Over here, I think the cheekbones, as on the human face, uh, the cheekbones uh, are a place that often uh, reflect light, um, just because of the, the prominence of that structure. One thing that I'm trying to do here is to, to get the bridge of the nose quite bold, then have it get a little, um, it's going to get sort of grayish in this area, and then it starts lighting up again right here around the cheekbone, and I think that can help to convey um, that structure, those two different planes, like this nose area, the bridge of the nose, and this area of the cheekbone are a little bit on the same plane, uh, whereas this side over here is facing away, and so it's not getting hit quite so hard. But... Um, yeah, absolutely. If you want to learn how to draw a skull, if you want to learn how to draw anything, it certainly helps to um, 
look at reference and we live in the glorious uh, age of Google and uh, any other number of uh, internet sites where you can uh, look for reference photos. I am uh, old enough to remember when and <laughs> we didn't have that. You had to go to the library you know, as recently as the early 90s, basically, uh, if you wanted a photo of something, you had to go hunting uh, for it. Uh, but boy, it's just uh, amazingly uh, convenient to, to be able to find a, a photo of almost anything on the internet. Now, like I was saying over here, um, this area uh, that uh, I had never really noticed before, and I think it's sort of buried uh, beneath the flesh and we don't really see it so much, but when the uh, flesh is removed, <laughs> peeled away so that you see underneath, uh, you do see this very prominent ridge back here uh, just behind the uh, cheekbone. And uh, that I noticed, uh, certainly when being lit from this angle, was getting hit pretty hard with the white light. Now over here, uh, up above the um, eye socket, we will eventually be also um, shading this in, or that's not shading, it's adding white, isn't it? Sort of hitting this with the highlights. Um, you'll notice that as I shade, I'm using a technique that is sort of lots of little circles um, to, to sort of build up uh, a, a sense of the surface here. Uh, that is uh, certainly not the only way to do it. Um, you could uh, really come up with any you know, any type of shading technique that you prefer. I'm trying to create, you know, I'm actually trying to work with the uh, texture of this paper, which is a little bit rough. It's not the smoothest um, paper I've ever drawn on, but I'm kind of taking advantage of that, along with the pencil, which is, um, tends to be a little rough anyway, to uh, create a sense of texture here. So I'm not pushing down super hard, and uh, the paper is, is kind of giving me uh, a, a light texture that will hopefully uh, eventually pay off in terms of, you know, giving us the sense of a skull that is not absolutely smooth, that has a little bit of texture to it. Now, a cool little detail, I think I'll just sort of jump to it right now, uh, that uh, I noticed, and it must be, um, yeah, again, someone who's studied skulls uh, is going <laughs> to slap their own skull in the forehead and say, Crowley, this stuff is just, everybody knows this stuff. But uh, the, the, the little crack up here that is the sort of different plates of the skull um, joining together, uh, getting in this little um, jagged crack uh, going across the top of the skull, I think it can be a nice little detail. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, the process of rendering that accurately is a little time-consuming. I think you'll see me going back in here um, later on when I, when I do a sort of uh, final polishing phase in time-lapse. But um, suffice to say, uh, because of the sunlight or the whatever light is coming from over here, um, one edge of the, of the crack is getting uh, lit, and then uh, if you sort of shade... I don't know what to say because shade is not the right word, but add white tone right up near the edge of that, but then stop just short of it. Then you're going to create this illusion of uh, there being a little bit of a crack uh, in the skull. And maybe one more thing I can say is that there, uh, in a number of the photos that I looked at, there was indeed a bold highlight, as you would expect, right up at the top of the cranium. And so I'm going to start building this up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we've done a fair amount of this real time. And I do feel like I may be running out of significant things to say. I suppose one uh, final thing I can do then is to come down here. I noticed the, that the lower jaw um, has an interesting shape right back here where it kind of curves around creating two different planes right around the area of where the wisdom teeth would be. And you can kind of sense that it's sort of curving inward. Um, and so that uh, the jaw it sort of gets very sharp. There's a real sharp edge right here. And then there's a kind of a, a more muted um, 
edge right here where the where the chin, I guess you would call it. The bone beneath the chin, the jaw, is uh, uh, getting hit by light over here. And all the way across here, I'm going to be shading this in. Um, just uh, consider this shorthand for that. Uh, but what I'm trying to convey here is how uh, if light is coming from over here, uh, the, the way that the surface turns creates a little pocket of shadow here. Uh, and then the light is able to shine a little bit around that to hit this other uh, edge of the jaw. And this is one of these cool things that I think this... Um, this white pencil on black paper is pretty good at suggesting um, these deep shadows on the other side. Because normally you're spending a lot of time adding the shadow, this time you're spending a lot of time adding the light, and then when you get to an area of deep shadow you're basically just letting the paper <laughs> do all the work for you, which is kind of cool. Of course you spend a lot of time, <laughs> and it's a trade-off, and you end up uh, spending an awful lot of time over here on this side. Um, but yeah, it's, I think you can, you can see this tech, you know, this sort of area that I was talking about, the way it, uh, it, it bends away from the light a little bit just in that immediate area. Well, I think maybe that gives us, um, about as much of the real-time shading, uh, as we need for now. I'm going to kick it into time-lapse to sort of start to beef things up, uh, and add a little more detail. Um, I've kept the camera basically focused uh, on the entire image so far, but I think maybe it's time to zoom in if I can on certain areas as I begin to tighten things up. Um, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and do a little bit of this in time lapse and then I'll come back uh, with uh, some more uh, tips and pieces of advice relating to this uh, final polishing phase. Well, let's see if I can say a few things about uh, these final touches. Um, I'm taking a little bit of artistic license in terms of the interior of the eye here. Uh, you know, in some of the reference photos that I saw, you actually see quite a lot of the interior of the skull, you know, and uh, you know, a lot of light can get in there, but I sort of like the <laughs> classic Halloween empty sockets kind of look, so I, I am kind of parting perhaps a little bit with reality. Uh, in that regards, but I have uh, added some little bits here that suggest some light uh, coming into these uh, various areas. And uh, basically, I, I think it comes down to patience. Uh, as I said, um, you know, uh, using reference photos to, to spot all the little details. Um, just taking your time and uh, gradually building things up and occasionally taking things away. You know, um, I said that uh, the, the pencil is not as erasable uh, as the uh, chalk that I used at the beginning, but that doesn't mean that it cannot be erased at all. And uh, certainly if I decide to lighten things up and uh, su suggest that there's very little light getting back here, um, it can be done. Just, um, you know, maybe best uh, to be cautious and not put too much down uh, to begin with. But it is now time for me to pull out my white gouache. And uh, those of you who've been watching my videos know that I love to use white gouache for getting the really pure white highlights. And uh, I think I can do at least the first part of this um, real time, uh, dipping my brush into just a little bit of water here. And my approach uh, has always been to kind of um, use it almost straight out of the tube, but I do mix in a little bit of water so as to um, get it to the right consistency. I think straight out of the tube is pretty um, pretty thick. That was a bit thick. Um, <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to go ahead and start putting some of this in. So as I said, the, uh, the edge of the uh, eye sockets is a place that I saw getting a lot of uh, sort of reflected light um, in photographs. The bridge of the nose. I want to make sure I go in and hit that. And you can see that as I 
do this suddenly, you know, areas that looked pretty white um, are being revealed to have been really more of a very light gray. And uh, that this is actually the uh, true white. Uh, although even this needs probably to be built up a little bit uh, through successive coats to get to an absolutely pure white. Um, interestingly, in my uh, video last week, the Chibi video, which you would think is an entirely different subject matter, I did come to kind of the same point about contrast, you know, that um, a lot of what makes a, uh, an illustration look good is uh, contrast. I, I, I hesitate to make big laws and rules like that because not every uh, illustration needs to be super contrasty, but uh, certainly it is a, um, in certain illustrations, it can help a lot uh, to pull out, um, you know, a tool that makes the whites really, really white. Uh, and in this case, I'm not really making the blacks black, I'm just letting the black of the paper um, take care of that for me. But uh, by by popping in these little bits of white, here's an, another crack, and I didn't talk about that. Again, it's got to be separate plates um, of the uh, the skull, the various um, subsections uh, of the skull, and hitting those with a little bit of white gouache really uh, creates a nice effect. And certainly the teeth, that's another area that will benefit from uh, from white gouache. Now one thing that happens, I think, you know, your your sense of what teeth look like is based on what they look like when the person has gums, uh, if you even see those. Um, when, uh, when all of that is stripped away and what we see is just the skull and the way in which the teeth actually connect to the skull, you are maybe seeing more of the tooth than you normally see and you might be surprised that the shape of the tooth uh, is a little different. What I noticed was that, you know, the sort of squarish section down here, the more visible section, uh, gave way to a smaller uh, section that seems a, a bit more like the root of the tooth. Anyway, that, that's something to um, pay attention to. But uh, again, I'm, my uh, idea with this was to really have the uh, light quite prominent on the one side, and that means not continuing all the way across and hitting every single one of those with white gouache, but more uh, leaving the white gouache over here on this side, letting this be the part that really uh, gets the very whitest uh, highlights and then, um, you know, sort of having some discipline to not extend that all the way across. Although there is this one uh, bit over here that I spoke of earlier that really does, uh, at least in this lighting situation, uh, the light seems to glint off of it in a pretty prominent way. So I'm going to go in and get that little bit of the jaw in there. Well, I think I will sort of uh, give myself uh, one last little bit of uh, time lapse to uh, tighten things up and uh, put in any final touches before we uh, come back with a few final words. All right, well, as you can see, even after the white gouache stage, I will still go in uh, to tweak things uh, with the pencil, uh, adding little details here and there, erasing and so forth. Um, you know, putting a lot of time into this final polishing stage is always a good idea. I started this uh, illustration at around 9 a.m. Uh, it's 12 noon now, so uh, three hours, really, uh, that I've put into this, and that's really not even that much as these things go. So uh, do consider, uh, you know, putting in extra time to uh, make your drawing the best that it can be. But for now, let me thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like Mickey Falls or Brody's Ghost, my two graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2, my How to Draw books. Always so grateful to anyone uh, who helps me out by getting any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.